Welcome, Fabrizio, to the i 2 podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Uh, excited to get this conversation going. Before we jump in, I'd love it if you could maybe give a quick introduction about yourself and the company to our audience. I am Italian, living in the Netherlands, engineer by training, became entrepreneur in uh, 2019 when I quit my job in Asus Computing Group. Then I quit the corporate because I saw an opportunity in the market, the needs of a different computing technology in the edge, uh, in the Internet of Things space. I had no clue how to do it, to be honest, because uh, I always bought, purchased computing uh, hardware. And then I started thinking, can I solve this problem? Uh, can I figure out a solution? And uh, um, it took me two years to put together a team. And uh, in 2021, we started Accelerate AI, which is a company um, that delivers an high performance, efficient uh, uh, computer, it's cheap, uh, to accelerate computer vision, generative AI model inside of edge devices. We are now on the market, scaling the company, presence in 15 countries, more than 220 people on board, uh, roughly 200 million in grants and uh, an equity raised, uh, and uh, happy to, to see what's next. So what I wanted to ask you, I guess we could start kind of high level here, is when we're talking about edge and we're talking about AI, when you kind of bring them together, what does that mean? You know, what is edge AI native hardware? What is edge AI native software? Like how, what is different maybe from like when people just think about edge computing in general? Is there a difference and how should people be thinking about it? You think about what's the edge. The edge is the market of devices which are around us. An edge device can be a car, can be a medical device, can be a robot can be a surveillance system. All these devices uh, are connected to the cloud, but it's clear that they cannot transfer to the cloud or the information, uh, like uh, images, videos, you can't just transfer everything to the cloud. And there is a need uh, to process data inside the device itself. But if you look at the standard computing that we have in a laptop or today in these edge devices, these computers, these chips are not optimized to handle uh, algorithms, uh, machine learning, deep neural networks. Therefore, it's required to have a different hardware, which should be efficient, cost-effective, and um, scalable. And we are here to solve this problem. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think we've seen so many conversations or so many, I guess we've had conversations here and seen a lot of different progressions in the industry with people moving closer and closer to the edge and that edge computing is just becoming more powerful. What are some of the benefits that you could break down for the audience around moving to the edge? You know, obviously eliminating or at least reducing latency. I'm sure there's challenges when it comes to, to moving as well, but just kind of break that down for us a little bit. Latency clearly is, uh, is one because you cannot uh, imagine your car in a tunnel driving that can, cannot connect with the cloud and has to take a decision that you need connectivity. You need to have intelligence that around without connectivity. Reducing latency, taking decision in real time. There are other benefits. I mean, you, having the intelligence at the edge, you can unleash scenarios that today are not uh, uh, there. You can you cannot imagine robots going around without a brain inside the robot itself that are just connected to the clouds. Then uh, um, we strongly believe that as a, a technology matures, like in artificial intelligence, uh, it tends to to decentralize and. Uh, Today we are talking about AI, but AI is in the cloud. The next big waves is the wave of AI at the edge in the physical world. If you want to see robots around you, you need a different technology to power this robot, efficient uh, and, and, and flexible enough to run this algorithm. It totally makes sense. And what are some of the challenges when it comes to kind of that real-time edge processing? Like, obviously, there might be some device constraints for things that are out there in the market now, but things that are being built for this specifically, obviously, they'll be tailored appropriately. But what are some of the challenges people need to be aware of when it comes to real-time edge processing? You have to optimize algorithm because today you develop uh, uh, machine learning uh, essentially in, a, in, in an environment where there are no limits, right? You have this huge center AI cluster of 50,000, 100,000 GPU to train the network. But then even when you run the network, you run it inside this large and heavy uh, rack PC. You have to clearly distill the model. You have to customize the model to make it smaller, but keeping precision, accuracy, and uh, preserving the intelligence of the model itself. Then the first challenge is to compress the model. But if you see also recently with the progress in the field and also the announcement of Deep, uh, Deep Seek, right? That I don't want to dive in in a, what they did, but for sure they uh, they still the model, they make it smaller and it is um, way smaller than the existing model and very powerful. This is our challenge that has to be solved. 
And the other clearly is the architecture itself, the hardware design has to be designed in a way that can be uh, portable, scalable, uh, small and low power consumption, because at the edge you have quite often batteries powered products uh, and you, you require low power consumption. As this all plays together, there are going to be questions about privacy, compliance with regulations like, like GDPR. What is the importance of, let's say, the local data processing to help with improving privacy compliance while reducing you know, security risks associated with like people know about with, when it comes to cloud-based systems by moving to the edge? It's actually a good point. Uh, privacy is a concern, but not only of private people, even of, co of companies, because most of the value of, uh, uh, is, uh, is inside the data. I mean, and companies, they don't want to share the data. They don't want to use uh, um, centralized systems where the data sits in the server outside their own properties. Then uh, AI the edge enables this, allow people to be in control of uh, the da their data, use their data, and not transfer the data to a large provider, but also companies then to do the same, essentially, to uh, utilize all their knowledge that is inside this data and use to fine tune models and to introduce AI in their own solution without the needs to sharing with competition and so on. Then it's a, it's a very strong requirement. Where does this all kind of go in your mind? I mean, you talked about obviously the, you know, you kind of gave the example about being in a car and your car needing to make decisions. So that's an applicable use case that people can completely understand. But what other industries or what other use cases, like what is this going to enable for companies to be able to, I guess, build and deploy that they maybe weren't able to before? The idea is just going to change completely the way we live because once, uh, once AI is integrated in any device, all our experience, will change. Think about today, you want to check, you have to go to your doctor to do a check. Your doctor will send you to hospital. Why they send you to hospital? Because there is a machine that takes a scan of your body in, 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 all, all the time. Why the machine is there? Why? Because it's expensive. Why is it expensive? Because the technology is expensive. Why? Because it's not, uh, the, the technology is today, it, it's not a top-notch technology. When AI will be deployed at mass at scale inside edge devices, you will have devices in your doctors. You can, you can prevent diseases just with a simple visit. There will be a moment where your phone will do this for you, your computer, you will not even need, a, need probably to go to your doctor. This is a simple case. But you can see this happening in any market, in agriculture, the way you can improve the yield of crops, right? Uh, today, the, the, the way you can uh, increase the density of the production and the quality in environmental control, uh, um, you can prevent things to happen and monitoring things in a better way, in a more efficient way, taking real-time decisions, then everything is going to change. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, around us in the way we work and clearly robotics, which is the big next big wave that I believe will happen in 10 years. Not a, in industrial environment, probably in the next five years, you will start to see the first deployment, but in the real robot walking around probably will take still 10 years. So let's say a company right now is look, listening to this. They have a solution. They have devices out in the field. They're like, okay, you know, obviously we need to improve the computing power, the, the edge computing power of, of our solution, because we obviously it's going to enable lots of different benefits for them. What happens with existing solutions out in the field when it comes to wanting to bring AI to the edge for them? Is that possible? Is it something you can retrofit? Is it something that they have to just kind of rethink and then redeploy? Or how, how, do, how would somebody approach that? It's a good point. I think that to have fast deployment at the edge, you have to retrofit the existing solution in many cases, and then deliver a technology which can be integrated inside the existing application. Today in the world, there are more than a billion of cameras. You cannot think that they will be replaced with intelligent cameras. But what you can think is that you connect this camera to intelligent system in proximity of the camera. It's just you add the box PC. This is a simple example where you can um, enable new feature uh, um, bring a technology to an existing uh, installed uh, a fleet uh, um, of devices. Uh, same for any other applications. I mean, I think the uh, the first step will be introduce uh, AGI as complementary solution physically to card that can be plugged in in a, a software level with a very simple software stack which can fit and be uh, easily integrated in the existing software stack. The next step will be a, a purely AI native solution and will require a little bit more time, more maturity of the hardware and software stack to happen, probably five to 10 years. Fantastic point you make about the being able to kind of complement existing, like let's say, like you said, cameras, right? You, you have the 
just regular cameras installed in a facility and you want to kind of enhance the computing power, enhance what they, you're able to do with that, able to capture that video, but have some have that computing done with AI separately, but at the edge, just not doesn't have to be a AI powered camera. We've actually seen that deployed in, in different settings and it's actually it works very well. It actually makes it more likely that the company will adopt the solution because they don't have to make big changes to like their infrastructure, right? They can just kind of add it on. And they can enable new features because people think camera, they are um, camera for surveillance, but camera are cameras. Camera are just fitting information. And with that information, you can do plenty of things. You can clearly check in a shop if people are stealing, but you can also check the behavior of people to improve their experience in the shop. Check if uh, all the, the, the goods is in stock or is not on stock. Then you can improve the operation, of, the operation of your company. You can improve the customer experience. You can learn a lot from their images just sort of thinking an existing solution. And this is the real market, I think, and the real, the first step for enabling a different uh, experience. How does this impact cloud, like long-term in your mind? I think it's complementary. You will always have, uh, it's, uh, I don't see, in the, I don't believe in the dualism, uh, cloud versus edge. Cloud will always be there because you will always have cutting edge technology running and it, you will have to run in the, in the cloud as well as training. It will take several years before training a model directly on the edge. And I don't see, uh, it, will, it will not happen uh, for, uh, uh, at least for the cutting edge models. I think you cannot run everything at the edge and you cannot run everything at the cloud. It's kind of complementary. Like uh, if you think about today in the video distribution, right? You have a, a kind of a situation where you have uh, data centers with video, but you have also the stock computers uh, that are redistributing videos, right, for the streaming, right? And that it's not purely centralized, a kind of hybrid architecture. You will have the same at the edge to the point that AI will run in your computer, in your phone, partially. And uh, if you need more, it will have access to the cloud. You can imagine an, a, a reasoning system that some question will be processed inside your phone, but some others with requests in the cloud. The model itself will determine it whether I need to go, I need from the phone to go to the first, uh, to the base station, because you can have in the base station of telecom provider, the first AI or in the data center or in the full computer, then you, you will have a fully distributed technology, I say. So let me ask you just generally speaking about just, just Gen AI and, and kind of the hype and everything that's been going on. So how, how established, how established AI techniques such as let's say machine learning, we talk about deep learning, we've had conversation about rule-based systems. How will that all, all those different AI techniques continue to drive a ma majority of impactful AI solutions is kind of what we're seeing in the market, especially in an IoT context. How are you seeing this kind of Gen AI hype play a role and where do you see it kind of going? will play a very important role because it will change completely the way we interact with the machine. Well, the first role you will play at the edge is the way we interact with your car. Is the way a, a, um, a work will interact with the machine is using to whatever he has to do. Can be for a doctor, the scan machine that will be intelligent enough to do the first check of whatever picture you will have and also the first suggestion. And then becoming an assistant, the machine will assist the person. But also the machine will, will evolve in the direction to understand what is to be done to preserve them and to, uh, in case of damages, in case of uh, problems, right? You think about the manufacturing center, today you have sensors that are, or alarms that are popping up, and then you have to figure out how to solve the problem. Tomorrow the machine will tell you how to solve the problem because it will be intelligent enough to think, oh, I have a problem with this valve or in this sens sensor, and to, to fix it, I suggest to do ABC. A lot of the companies that we've had exposure to who are looking to adopt IoT solutions and trying to learn more about what the technologies are, they're hearing about all these AI technologies, but they're not totally sure how they're going to play a role in benefiting this, their solutions, right? So I think this conversation has done a great job talking about how it's going to be helping, especially at the edge, which is important. But they're also hearing on just their own you know, consumer side, hearing about Gen AI and you know what is machine learning? What is deep learning? What are all these different things and how are they going to play a role in the future development and growth of IoT solutions? Generative AI are the model that can solve this, that can give the intelligence of, of these machines. But uh, the other things that they will do is, is, uh, is uh, extract information from the data in a way that today, most of the cases, uh, we still have uh, a very large human component uh, required to analyze data and to figure out what's important, what's not, and what we can do with this data. Tomorrow, this will be run by the AI. In the big audience, we are talking about generative AI as a tool to talk, 
to ask a simple question and to, and to create a simple, simple images. But as I said, the implication are way more important. I, I think we have to think about uh, uh, an example like protein folding. That is a clear example where AI and uh, technology, uh, generative technology can, uh, or deep learning technology can have a large impact in, so in society, but probably less understandable from uh, the, uh, the, the the typical person, average Joe that we have outside. One of the last things I wanted to ask you, uh, I know, I think it was, I was mentioned that you went back in, I think it was like November to, was it supercomputing the, the conference? How, how was that? I'm just curious, like what the vibe was like, like what are the top topics? What, what were people really covering kind of as you were getting towards the end of 2024 and now we're obviously in 2025, like what, what are the trends that are that really kind of leading the way there? Is there an alternative to NVIDIA? This was the question that people want to answer, right? This was one. NVIDIA is still there. NVIDIA is dominating. And it, in this event was the first event uh, where you can start to see popping up company, uh, mainly clearly American company, if I can name like Grok, like Sambanova, proposing uh, of Cerebras, proposing alternative solution to NVIDIA. And some of them also viable solution in the space of inference. Then I think that the, the focus was uh, AI uh, is moving from um, there is not only training, then there is also inference, which is the process of reasoning, which is becoming more and more important after the launch of the, uh, um, of chat GPT-01, essentially that unleash, uh, and well, highlighted the importance of the process of inference, which means uh, the, the needs of a different hardware to more optimize, to allow, uh, billions of people to access to this technology and running uh, in a very efficient way. Then this was kind of, I think the discussion on the conference, a new architecture of computing alternative to NVIDIA and what is happening on computing in particular, how important is inference in, in, uh, in, in the next wave of AI. It's exciting time for sure. I think there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, the different applications of the technology to benefit existing as well as new enabling new solutions across the board or something that I think we have a really, we're really focused on and, and seeing a lot of excitement in the market. So how can our audience learn more about your company? Like where can they reach out, follow up, questions, anything like that? What's the best way to do it? It's very simple. They can go to Accelera.ai, uh, uh, check the product, but they can also buy because we open a web shop and today they can just order it online, get a sample and try and start to play with it. Well, we'll make sure we link all that up in the description um, for this episode and everywhere we promote it. And um, we'll hopefully get this out to our audience very soon. And uh, thanks again for being here. Thank you, Ryan. It was a great pleasure to be with you.